Madonna. Thank you so much. That was a really sweet intro. Thanks for coming to my talk. I know that this is towards the end of the day. I've heard many naps have been taken this afternoon. <laughs> so for those who came back from their naps to join, thank you so much. Um, I'm very excited to take you through an introduction, uh, hopefully as gently as I can, to WebUSB. So I did actually have an alternative title for this, and um, if you want to know the meaning behind it, um, I will explain to you after this at the after party, but what I really wanted to call it was how do you send a sync in this, the browser, um, because that definitely has a, a little bit of relevance to WebUSB. But before, I just wanted to introduce myself super quickly. Uh, if you don't know of me, uh, my name is Suze Hinton. I am NoobCat or NoUpCat on the internet. You can say it either way. It's definitely OK <laughs> to say it either way. Uh, I work on open source IoT libraries in my spare time. A lot of them are in JavaScript, which is why I'm here today. If you came to the NodeBots workshop yesterday, thank you. I was really happy to see you there. It was really fun. <laughs> Uh, you saw me really badly explaining certain components in the morning, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but during the day, um, I do have to earn a salary in order to pay my rent, so I am in developer relations at Microsoft, and I actually do focus on IoT there too, but it's more um, security-based and IoT in the cloud and a lot of enterprise stuff as well. So if you're really interested to talk to me about that later too, you can also come up to me. Uh, I wanted to also thank the organizers. Um, you may have noticed that I'm was not originally on the schedule, so uh, I was um, asked to give this talk a week ago, so just bear with me because some of the demos are a little rough too, so I'll explain that later on as well. Um, so today's aim is to help you see the browser and the web in a different way. I've definitely seen a lot of talks at this conference so far that are along those lines, which I think is really, really cool. And I want you to not be scared of hardware and microcontrollers because um, if I can hustle this in like less than a week, then uh, you can definitely do it. It might take a little bit longer if you're a beginner, but um, the, the world of hardware is getting ever and ever closer to browsers, and that's why I'm really excited to tell you about that today. So the topics we're actually gonna cover are just a history of like web and devices and how we've been like attempting to clumsily smash them together in the past, um, what web USB is, how to use WebUSB, and then like maybe some kind of futures stuff that I'm hoping to see, and how you can kind of help provide a future for it as well. So first of all, history of web USB. And what I mean by that is like somehow being able to put browsers and like devices like Arduinos and drones and boats and things like that together in the past. So we do actually have to go as far back as 2007 to 2009. Uh, that was when I first started getting into um, hardware and trying to sort of make really cool machines, but also like talk to it with my browser. And so the way that you did it back then was use Flash Communication Server. Has anyone used that? Yeah, a couple of us were starting to be in the minority. <laughs> uh, and you used this really cool app called Surproxy, and what it would do is it would take the serial port data coming in from like something like an Arduino, and it would then like um, proxy that onto like, um, uh, basically like a, a socket so that you could actually listen to the data coming in in your browser or in Flash, which was really, really interesting. So you would have your Arduino and your browser, but they were so far apart because you had to have all these steps in between, right? So you had Sir Proxy, which would go from serial to TCP um, so that you could then use Flash Communication Server and make a Flash app to listen to that. So I think the first example I ever did was I had like a, a trim part, like a little um, knob that you could turn, plugged into the Arduino, and when you turned it, uh, there was like a circle um, colored in with a color in flash, and as you, um, as you turn the knob, it would either change the cycle through all the colors or it would change the shape of the circle, and I thought I was a, a wizard, basically. <laughs> um, the code did not look much like what a wizard would write. Um, it, there was a really weird configuration file that you used in Surproxy, um, where you had to put lots of nerdy things like 
uh, the, the board rate and all your stop bits and parity and things like that. Um, but the flash communication stuff in ActionScript is pretty readable. You know, you can kind of see what's happening. And so it was actually pretty friendly once you actually got that data coming through. But we all know what happened <laughs> uh, with Flash. Um, it fell out of vogue for like very um, you know, understandable reasons, and I agree with a lot of those reasons. Um, and so sadly, I sort of had to put that method down. And it was really uncool for a while um, for me to say that I used to be a Flash developer for my day job. <laughs> Um, so we fast forward to 2013 to 2017, and we got this really cool thing in uh, the Chrome browser called Chrome Serial. And um, just wanted to just quickly, like before everyone gets excited, just uh, give a little bit of a rest in peace there. So I'll explain what happens <laughs> later on. <laughs> okay, so let's start with our scenario again. You know, we've got our Arduino, and we desperately want our browser to like start controlling it and showing data and stuff like that. So what we would do is we would use Chrome Serial, which was an API um, that allowed us to access the, um, the actual like serial communication that was built into Arduino boards or any other hardware that had like a serial port that we could connect to. And then the only way that we could actually use that API was it was sort of sandboxed into, uh, you either had to have a Chrome app um, and it had to sort of run in there. So for a while, there were like really cool things coming out where you had a website, but you also had to kind of install the companion app, and it was a little bit clunky. Um, but I was able to sort of demonstrate some of my hardware libraries working within that, um, and some people went on to kind of use my libraries uh, to make really cool stuff. Um, and one example that I really, really loved was the chip computer, which some of you might have seen on Kickstarter a few years ago. Uh, it was a $9 um, Linux computer, and when you actually got it in the mail, um, you know, it takes a while, as we know, with Kickstarters. <laughs> I used to work there, so I definitely know. <laughs> I think I backed 130-something things when I was there. Um, they had this really cool Chrome app that when you plug in your chip, um, you know, you could just go and install this app and run it in your browser, and then you could update the firmware in there. And I was like, wow, this hardware interface here looks super duper friendly. It just doesn't look scary like those weird malware looking apps that you normally have to download, you know, <laughs> in order to like update just like this one simple thing. And so, you know, if you're a hobby collector of hardware, you have all of these ridiculous applications just littered in your, uh, all over your hard drive, and you use them once and you just never, you forget about them. So I think at one point I had like six different versions of the Arduino ID running for different um, machines that only required a certain version, so it's a nightmare. Um, but speaking of Arduino, and I know that there's Arduino people here. Um, I caught up with them earlier. It's really cool. Arduino actually went and created this app that um, it's basically a living Chrome app that runs on Chrome OS devices, which means that you can program Arduino boards now in the browser with a full IDE, and then you can compile and upload that onto the board, and that's using Chrome Serial. And I thought that was so, so very cool. Um, and their Arduino Create platform is just like um, genius. I just, I th actually think it's a better experience than the normal um, Arduino IDE, which has been around for a while, which was sort of like based on the processing IDE. Um, and cool fact, like they actually use my uh, software, or at least they, they have been in the past in order to flash the Arduinos. So that was really awesome to kind of see my stuff like browser fired up or webpack or whatever and, and put into a Chrome app. Um, but you can kind of sense that that's a limitation, like only being able to run that on a Chrome app um, just doesn't mean that, you know, it's available to everybody. So, you know, it wasn't an official web spec either. Again, as I said, it only worked in Chrome apps, which is a pretty narrow ecosystem these days because they've sunset Chrome apps for just browsers and it only works on Chrome OS. Um, and so that happened in 2017 and there were a lot of really, 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 really sad no-bots people that year. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that brings us to today and what we've been kind of doing up until um, WebUSB, which is browsers and web sockets. So who went to the, um, the uh, was it the smartphone symphony earlier? Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, so we do the same thing with hardware where um, we use WebSockets and we have like a node server running um, you know, on our laptop and then we have our browser and our backend kind of node server is um, speaking by serial to the Arduino. It could be Johnny5 or something like that. And then it's sending just like messages through to the browser and the browser can also send messages back. So it's just like your own kind of invented protocol for figuring out how to like, you know, have that two-way communication. And that works okay because I feel like 
there's less distance between the Arduino and the browser in this case, and um, we are writing JavaScript the whole way too, which is helpful. Um, but again, you can still see that there's just a few steps in order to get going. Um, you can alternatively package all of this up into something like an Electron app or an NWJS app. Um, this is a piece of software I made for a Kickstarter project a while ago. Um, the, the project is called the Public Radio. It is uh, a radio in a mason jar, and it is a monogamous radio where you can only listen to one radio station. <laughs> <laughs> And so you can imagine people are like, I changed my mind. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to break up with NPR and I want to listen to something else. So, you know, they had to offer some software in order to like change the radio station, right? And if you moved countries, then you would have to update the band or the frequency or like, you know, radio is very complicated if you've ever checked out the Wikipedia page. And so I created this kind of proof of concept electron app for them, but it was like 100 megabytes to download just to change this radio station. And I'm like, I'm just contributing to the detritus of one off apps that are like living on people's hard drives and it just didn't feel right. But this was, I was like, I can feel it, I can smell it, we're so close to being able to use web technologies, you know, with Node and, it, and, and JavaScript and it feels good. Um, and even, um, you can technically use Arduino Create on, um, you know, a computer other than a Chrome um, book, but it does still have to run like a background app um, that runs in your tray um, that, kind of is able to listen on a socket to be able to kind of flash your Arduino. So it's, again, a better experience than the Arduino IDE, but it's still having this like coupling in between, right? And that's, as you can tell from the theme of this, that's what's been frustrating a lot of us this whole time. So now that we kind of see some of the problems that we've had in the past, which you might not have actually been part of if you haven't done hardware before, hopefully that helps you understand why WebUSB now is such a big deal. Um, and um, just to, to let you know, I will remind you of this later, WebUSB is a, um, an implementation of a different type of communication than serial. It's just that, you know, serial was kind of like what we had before this. So um, come and see me if you want to sort of know about the differences of them later on. So I'm gonna be pulling from the WebUSB spec a lot because I think that this spec is extremely unique in that uh, it has human readable paragraphs and information in it, and I think it's really well written. And um, one of the main authors, Riley, I had the pleasure of like, you know, speaking back and forth with on the internet recently, and that's something that he deeply cares about. And so I definitely, this is one of the only times I'm gonna encourage you to check out a spec because I think it's really great. So I'm gonna just like pull the main messaging from it so you can understand. So the WebUSB API provides a way to safely expose USB device services to the web. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what's cool is that it provides an API familiar to developers who have used existing native USB libraries and exposes the device interfaces defined by existing specifications. So what I like about this is rather than just reinventing the wheel and saying, well, we're gonna use USB, but we're gonna have our own thing and we're gonna like invent this thing for the JavaScript community, they just basically said, we're aiming this at you know, device manufacturers, we're aiming this at people who already know what this stuff is. If we just use the same specs, then it's probably got a better chance of success, and it's gonna be, you know, it's, it's cross-platform knowledge. I think that's really, really cool. Um, it is a little harder to learn as a result, but it just means that that knowledge can actually be uh, portable to other platforms, such as just writing like, you know, on the bare operating system, which is kind of cool. So again, WebUSB is different to serial. They're just different ways of interfacing with devices. WebUSB is more like the lower level stuff that um, most professionally manufactured de uh, devices know how to speak. Um, that being said, it's not you know, super mega complex to learn. So why is WebUSB better than all of the stuff that I offered um, you know, as solutions to you just before? So the first thing that I really like about it is that there is a permission-based model here. And so if somebody plugs um, in a device and they go to a website in order to connect directly to the, the device via web USB, they um, actually have to give that permission. So it's very similar to a webcam um, or your microphone or your location. I really like that and you can actually kind of provide filters so that you're only sort of showing your device and they don't have to pick from a list of weird random stuff that they've plugged into their computer. So I think that's really accessible there. I think one of the best features is that as soon as you plug in a 
web USB device, you have the option to provide a descriptor um, on your um, device that is advertised when it's plugged in, and it's a URL. And so uh, if your Chrome browser is up to date and supports web USB, and you plug in a web USB, um, you know, like compatible device, it's gonna immediately pop up this notification, and it's gonna say, hey, like I detected this machine, you should go to X URL in order to connect. So out of the box, someone has pulled this piece of hardware out and they plug it in and they immediately know where to go in order to start interacting with it. And I think that that's one of the single most powerful features of this and I love that it's just like a descriptor that you set on the device. But you're probably thinking, you know, we're JavaScript developers and uh, every, everything starts looking like a nail with our JavaScript hammer and, you know, why are we doing this in the browser? Why are we trying to turn the browser into an operating system? It's something that I hear a lot. So I just want to talk about some of the advantages there might be and why I've been so pushy about trying to make, make this happen over the last few years. So in my opinion, hardware interfaces, so writing software to, you know, to integrate with your devices, it should be fast to make, it should be cross-platform, and it should be easy to make it cross-platform. It should look good, and it should be accessible. You know, um, screen readers should be able to see it. Um, there should be like in easy ways in order to make that accessible on every single platform without having to like learn every system for doing that as well, right? And browsers are really commonly installed application on many computers. This um, doesn't necessarily require like the person to be online either. You know, if you wanted to um, try and run something on local host, that will actually work as well. And browser-based interfaces just happen to be those four things that I conveniently put in the list before. You can rapidly prototype um, web interfaces. They, you can hot patch them really easily and deploy updates. CSS is incredibly powerful to make something look friendly and to help you know, organize information and things like that. Um, and you have a consistent accessibility tree. If you make it accessible um, you know, in general in a browser by respecting the uh, WCAG guidelines and making sure that you're making use of ARIA features when needed, then it's going to be um, accessible to like all of the different browser choices if we're able to have web USB come to every browser in the future. And I think that's actually really, really powerful. And straight from the web USB spec with this API hardware, manufacturers will have the ability to build cross-platform JavaScript SDKs for their devices. So, you know, who likes the idea of the fact that if really cool stuff comes out on Kickstarter or like just, you know, is made by big manufacturers, wouldn't it be cool if like we were considered a first class citizen and we immediately got JavaScript SDKs to play with and all we needed to know was HTML and how to do control transfers to start like, you know, sending things? They could give us like a development kit that actually has all of that stuff laid out in order for us to start using it. I think that's awesome. So how do we use this? I can hear my friend Nathan in the back. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> um, so using WebUSB, uh, it's a little bit involved because we have that sort of user permission model. So I just wanted to step you through this really quickly before we look at a little bit of code. So you've got your user, you've got your browser, and they've plugged their device into it. And you know the user could be you, or it could be like um, you know someone who's bought your product, and you want them to start you know joining the two together. You want them to use their browser to interact with the device. Uh, the first thing we need is a user event, so they need to do something like click or just something intentional in order to start uh, the process with pairing to the device. Once they've done that. The browser will then look for devices and we can give it an optional filter such as the product or the vendor ID so that we can actually just fish out exactly what they're looking for to help them out. It then returns any devices that um, are plugged in that it finds that matches those requirements. The browser then says, hey, I found this device. I'm pretty sure this is what you want. Um, do you give permission for this website to start interacting with it? The user then confirms the permission, or they can deny it, um, or they can just like not do anything, close the tab, <laughs> which is uh, sometimes common with other permissions. But if they do confirm that permission, then uh, we can immediately start opening the device connection. We can select a configuration, um, which uh, you'll see in the code 
very soon. We claim an interface, which again is just like a term that we use when we're using the web USB protocol. So we claim an interface in order to be able to start like using the endpoints of that interface for, um, for your, our in and our out in order to talk to the device. And we can finally start the transfers, which is really, really cool. But, you know, when you actually see a demo of this, which I'm hoping my demo works, it's a long story, um, but you'll see like that this actually looks very fast. It's, it's more work for the developer than anything, but for the user it feels pretty seamless. Um, so this is part of the code for, for getting started. Um, you have your filters, so you can see here that I have a specific vendor ID that I want to look for. So this vendor ID might belong to a company such as Arduino or Adafruit, or maybe it's your own company. Uh, we then, um, I'm using fancy async await because it's so good for hardware. Um, so <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically just accessing the USB API from the navigator object, like how cool is that? It's directly in the browser. And so I'm requesting the device by passing in those options. Uh, it will eventually come back, and if it um, found you know, some matches, then I'm gonna be able to look at the device product name, the manufacturer name, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so some of the same code is at the top. Um, we request the device. We uh, open the device once it is confirmed to be open. Uh, we use our data sheets for our devices, which again is a really cool thing to learn about, uh, to se select the right configuration we want um, and to claim the right interface. So the interface is to do with like the endpoints where we want to communicate in and out. So devices can have um, several different interfaces. So again, you can check your data sheet to find out which one you need. After that, you can just start sending data. Um, so I am doing device transfer out. I'm choosing the first, uh, sorry, the second endpoint on my um, interface, and I'm just sending the byte like zero, uh, sorry, one A. So I'm just sending like one byte of information. And that one A might be an opcode. It might be something like make a noise on my device. You know, it could be start uploading firmware or something like that. It's really up to the device manufacturer, so it's really hard for me to give you super specific Hello World examples because it really does depend on the device. Um, but then we can wait for a response, which is pretty cool, by doing a transfer in instead of a transfer out. We can uh, supply the endpoint, which is the first argument, and we can also ask for how many bytes we want. So I'm asking for five bytes in this case and then we can console log out that response. So again, if you're not familiar with the USB interfaces, this might be a bit like, I, there's, there's a lot of terminology here that I don't know about, but what I do like is that it is built on existing standards, so you don't have to wait for people to start writing blog posts about this stuff. You can go and read up on the existing USB spec um, and start using kind of more native libraries such as LibUSB if you really wanted to to get started. And again, I love data sheets, just want to take a moment to respect how awesome they are. Um, and so they will give you this information that you're looking for, and often it's in handy table format. So you can see here, it's giving you how many configurations there are um, and things like that. So if you see that there's only one configuration, then you can just like pick the zero one, right? So um, it will actually sometimes give you that information, and if you don't know a lot, you can just guess and eventually it will work. Um, so yeah, so I don't, do a lot of hardware um, demos anymore. I tend to talk more on a variety of topics, but I'm sort of known for my hardware talks. Um, so I'm gonna do some demos. <laughs> so we'll see how they go. Um, these are especially fragile demos um, for a couple of reasons. So my first disclaimer to you is that WebUSB, you know, it's changing, it's new, it's fancy, it only works in Chrome, um, and everything that I've made is on weird Git branches on my local computer that I've deployed somewhere, and some of it was written on airplanes, so it's not fantastic. Um, the other thing is, this is literally where I was when I got a call from JSConf saying, someone dropped out, do you wanna give a talk? <laughs> And I was like, uh, I don't really have any of my stuff on me. Like, I don't have any of the stuff that I could, you know, show uh, how WebUSB works or anything. Um, so I did call in my friend Rick. <laughs> I was like, hey, do you have all this stuff? You're coming to JSConf. Do you have a chip that you don't care if I brick? Like, and he was really great. So thank you, Rick, for saving me today. And I just wanted to give him a quick hand because thank you. <laughs> So what I really wanted to do was I wanted to show you the futures of WebUSB, right? I wanted to be like, here is a chip, 
Um, you know, it's a bare microchip that, you know, you can like you flick off an Arduino and start programming. And the little, the sort of like long red device you see at the top is actually a programmer. And that programmer does speak web USB. So theoretically, you know, I was going to show you this thing that uploads code to the chip and everything. Um, but unfortunately, this is all I brought with me on my vacation. And I feel like that's still a decent amount to bring on a vacation. <laughs> So I had a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of MacGyvering over the last few days. So if you've seen me intently like putting jumper wires everywhere and tweeting about needing jumping jumper wires, that was me trying to get that really cool demo uh, that I just showed you here to work. And I just couldn't get it going. I did half hack an Arduino to get it to pretend to be this programmer. And I was like really proud of that. But yeah, it just didn't quite get there. So I do apologize. But I do have a video of that demo. Um, but I do have a different demo that you're probably going to resonate with better anyway. So I'm going to show you that um, really quickly. And then if we have time, I can show you the other video. So you can see that uh, I have a camera focused on me that is deliberate. Uh, I <laughs> it's like, I think you left your FaceTime on. Uh -huh. So I have this device here. So on the bottom is like, you can think of this as the Arduino board. This one is from Adafruit. It's the Feather 32U4. It's a fantastic little device. Um, and you can plug all the, these different sort of like wings onto it where you just stack them on top. Rick Waldron was fantastic and he brought me this tripler, which just means that I can have them side by side, but they're still connected to each other like they're stacked. This is magical. I didn't even know you could buy these. Um, so this is a little screen here. So my aim is to use the browser to like, send something to the screen. And then that's going to be our happy demo for today. So I just wanted to show you this before I plug it in. And then I'm actually going to go to my browser, because hopefully you'll see that that um, notification comes up. I can't find my. There we go. All right. So I'm going to plug this into my computer. And then I'll hold this up later just to see if it actually works. Let's see. Oh, all right. So that's pretty small. Don't clap. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the cool bit. But anyway, you see here, it says Feather 32U4. As I said, go to webusb.fragile.systems, which is a domain name that I actually own. Um, it's meant for my demos that are really bad like this, OK? <laughs> OK. Um, so my friend made this cool thing called OLEDJS Designer, and then I like fancied it up with a rainbow. Um, but I, <laughs> I thought it would look like cool. Um, but I also like hacked it to work with WebUSB. So this previously didn't work with WebUSB. You could just design stuff, download it, and then upload it to an Arduino later. Um, so I'm going to write something real quick. I'm going to try so hard not to go over time. Hi. J. Yeah, this is really cool. You should go play with this just in general. You know, it's like 8-bit uh, art, but it's um, for monochrome screens. So hi, JSConf. Looks terrible, but I'm Russian. All right, um, so technically that means that uh, if we click Connect and cross our fingers, oh, there we go. So we have our 32U4 right there. Pew. Uh, we're going to try and connect to it. Let's see what happens. Ooh, I saw something. It might actually work. Um, OK, so um, this is really hard to actually do um, without kind of like losing the focus of the, the browser. So let's see what we can do. Huh? I don't have DV running right now. I sort of shut a bunch of stuff down. Um, all right, so I'm going to click Send Image. And then we're, oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting to actually go wrong. You know what I mean? Like, OK, so I did a weird thing where I got a cable stuck. I'm just going to have to like redo this. I'm so sorry. Just, just, just build in the suspense. You're welcome. OK. So I have to like re refresh this. So OK, so this is where um, the SIGINT thing doesn't work. So normally when you want to kill Johnny Five, this is what this is using. Uh, you send just a Control C. How do you do that in the browser? It's not, it doesn't work um, at all. I lost my screen. I, I don't. Any minute now. Oh. Oh, yeah, OK. I'm waiting for my confidence monitor. OK. All right, sorry. Oh my god, I'm going to have to draw this again. <laughs> Let's just connect to it first, huh? Yep, looks good to me. Hi, this is going to be worse. <laughs> Crap, I'm running out of time. So glad I didn't bring the other demo now. 
JS conf. It's fine. Okay. So we're going to hold this up and then not screw up the AV this time. Oh, I've tangled it again. Okay. We're ready? Yeah! That works surprisingly well. And I feel like you clap louder than them, so that, that's good. <laughs> OK. All right. Cool. All right. So that worked. So that was literally seamless because there was just none of this fancy stuff like gluing it all together. It was just like, low, uh, there was, there's some hacks. And I want to thank Lewis for that because he wrote the kind of hack that got Johnny Fi working with Web USB because that's actually not even supposed to be a thing, but he did really good at that. So thank you, Lewis. Um, this is my other demo, which was, oh yes, thank you, Lewis. Yes. Because he's here today, and he was doing the no copters yesterday. He was awesome. Um, so this is actually like what happens when you try and program that bare chip. So this was the demo that actually worked that I shot in my hotel room. So you can see there, it read the programmer. Uh, it got the chip signature. And each little hash you see there is like one page of memory being written. So I was able to even get like the, oh, OK, I wrote that page. I finished that page. I finished this one. So like you can like make an IDE natively in the browser now, and you can like program microchips and stuff. Like imagine just going to a URL and going, I don't know how to use this, and like there's like drag and drop scratch interfaces to like program these, and like I just I just wanted to tell you how excited I was. So yeah, <laughs> cool. So demo number one was made with a Web USB serial, which was written by Lewis. So yeah, thank you so much for that because it's definitely a really cool hack. Um, Johnny Five was uh, what I was using in order to like write to the screen. I wrote the module to um, that actually kind of like draws pictures and, and can send text and stuff to the screen. I also wrote PNG to LCD, which um, allows me to also like upload bitmaps, which I didn't have time to show you, but you could like upload pictures of cats and stuff, and it'll convert it. Uh, Rachel, my friend, um, did OLEDJS Designer, which is bomb, and I used Webpack, which was the weirdest thing ever to do for hardware. I think I texted Marek and I was like, I'm using Webpack for hardware. I don't like this world at all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got away with it for a while. Demo number two is made with um, AVAlgo SDK 500 version 2, which is just the protocol that the programmer speaks. Um, that's part of my JavaScript uh, hardware repertoire. I'm using AVAlgo ISP Mark II, which is the programmer. So those two together are what allows me to speak it. And I'm using Webpack. And I wrote that really bad code on a plane to Australia a few months ago. So I'm just glad that it worked in the demo. So futures, before I run out of time. Current support, let's talk about that. Aww. <laughs> Sad. Uh, so it only works in Chrome, but what's cool is that it works in Chrome for Android. So I have this really cool device that's too small to show up here, but you can like, if you can get one of those weird like, you know, female USB to like male micro USB, you can like plug stuff into your phone and just start controlling lights and stuff. So that's actually really cool, right? So I'm hoping that this is more green soon. Uh, I work at Microsoft, so I'm working on it. I'm like winking at the edge people, and I'm giving them all of these web USB devices, <laughs> but I'm not sure how much impact I'm having. So please tell browser vendors that you want this stuff. Please help me, because I can't do this alone. <laughs> Uh, why support this? I feel like I did a pretty good job of kind of showing that. But again, just to draw from the web USB spec, this will be good for the web because instead of waiting for a new kind of device to be popular enough for browsers to provide a specific API, which is kind of what's happening now, uh, new and innovative hardware can be built from the web from day one. That's pretty sweet. You know, you don't have to like wait for these things. So like anything can be interfaced as long as it's just like a regular USB, which is a lot of devices out there already. So if you wanted to learn more, definitely, again, highly recommend that you check out the web USB spec. It is hosted at the WICG GitHub uh, repository and you, uh, organization. You'll find that at web USB. My Arduino, uh, the Arduino example will get you started. So I sort of was doing similar things in that demo, but I was using Johnny5 on top of that. So please check that out because um, it has step-by-step -step instructions on sort of how to implement your very first cool thing. Um, including like a web page where you can just immediately run it. And as long as you've uploaded the code to your Arduino, it's good. And uh, my demo is at that address there. But again, it's like super shady code. But hopefully you'll enjoy reading it. So thank you. Woo!